other settings that can be useful to man easily manipulate fibers in ZBrush are found in the brush palette. So I have the move brush active. I have a bit of elasticity. That is something that I've shown you in the previous video with elasticity. The movement becomes more smooth. And in the brush palette, you have for the brush, and as I said, I have the move brush active. You have fiber mesh settings. When preserve length is set to zero, the others are grayed out. And now I can really pull out those hairs if I want to. And as soon as preserve length is higher than zero, you see that the other settings become available. So when you set it to 100 preserve length, then I can move the fibers around, but they do, won't scale. And of course, I can mask off that part if I want to. So preserve length, important setting. And as you can see, I have another subtool visible in the background. And subtools in the background can be used with front collision detection tolerance. So the higher the setting, the more pixels will be taken into consideration. And what does it actually do? Well, let me show you. I'm going to unhide this. So right now the front collision is set to 200. I'm going to set it to 100. And it will detect the subtool, the visible subtool in the background and its front collision. So when I move these hairs in the front of that subtool around, then when I go to the top, you see that there is a gap in that subtool. So I can rotate around, manipulate the hairs. And from collision detection, oh, it sets to 400. That's a bit high. So I'm going to maybe set it to 50. So now when I manipulate these hairs and go to the side view, you see that there is a gap. I'm going to pull these hairs closer, smooth them out a bit. And when I go to the side view and manipulate, they should take that front collision detection into consideration. So you can see really up here that there is a nice gap, maybe when I hide that subtool, it becomes more visible. In a way, it takes a bit of experimentation because it is front collision detection, so you have to look up at it from the front, if you will. So if I want to manipulate this over here, now that front collision is being applied to these hairs, but when I now also want to move these hairs, that is something that I don't want to do because this is actually not front view anymore. But now it is front view like this. So you have to look at it as from the front. So if I manipulate this one, I probably have to lower my brush size. Otherwise, I'm going to manipulate these also and I don't want to do that. A bit bigger. So manipulating this, and maybe my preserve length to
This is the first time I'm doing this, so it takes a bit of experimentation, and this is not a very useful example with that geometry, but it does demonstrate the front detection collision tolerance. You have other settings that you can fine tune and adjust. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that you can use subtools in the background and with front collision detection tolerance setting you can adjust how far and I increase this how far the fibers will try to stay away from the subtool in the background and you have to look upon this it, it, it operates from the angle you're viewing at your geometry So when I hide that sub tool again, you see that that shape has been maintained. There are, of course, there is some cleanup to do. So uh, yeah, that sub tool is not feasible now, so it won't actually matter anyway. But when I lower my previous, it will be get easier to manipulate individual fibers. That. and sometimes it takes a bit of testing before you have the one that you want but anyway you see that you can really fine-tune fibers I also I, I, for a long time I thought that fiber mesh was really hard to use but once you get an understanding of all the different settings that you can manipulate then fiber mesh really becomes a lot of fun it's like becoming a hairdresser if you like with the virtual one then sometimes you have to turn around to get to the right fiber like that And of course, you can increase your previous, look for other stray fibers. Just like that. So you see, you can really shape with a lot of accuracy with the move brush, with elasticity, with preserve length. Yeah, it's a setting per brush. So if I choose another brush, for instance, the groom hair long brush, you see that the fiber mesh settings for that brush are different. When I go back to my move brush you also have fiber mesh settings that you can adjust so very important to know that when working with fiber mesh and you can really fine-tune sometimes it is hard to select a particular one you can try with masking Invert the mask, hopefully, yep, that does the trick, so you can also use masking with these fibers, so if I mask that off, invert the mask, I'm, I'm only manipulating those fibers. Never knew that fiber mesh was that easy 
So I'm going to keep it at that. It's just a test. And as shown in the background, you have that geometry. You see that the fibers with the front collision detection tolerance are really helpful to shape hair in a way you like to. Anyway, so hope you found it useful. Bye for now.